beautiful dark people and welcome back to the channel my name is stephanie and i'm here with a handsome rambo and chalky's over there in his bed asleep and as you can see in loads of videos my dogs are very sleepy they are very calm they are in their beds a lot and it is because we practiced calmness a lot and we place or i place really high value on calmness and i will do another video um, explaining why this is so important especially in a multi-dog household but also in a single dog household Today, this is not the topic of the video though, because today it's all about Rambo or <laughs> what Rambo has taught me. And I think this will be transferable for so many, for you, for people who think of getting a dog, for people who have a bully breed, etc. So some things I'm going to talk about are breed related or bully breed specific and some things are just completely dog related. And I'm looking forward to hearing from you whether this is something you experience as well or whether your experience might differ from mine. Without any further ado, let's get started. So the first thing I learned from adopting Rambo, and Rambo is senior dog by now, he's about nine and I got him three years ago. I'm really sorry, this is going to sound so freaking cheesy, but it's so, so true. He was a life changer. He was an absolute game changer and I love this boy to pieces. One thing he taught me is being in the moment, being mindful. And seeing this boy, so when we got him, the shelter had started to walk him in the park and you could tell he was already been in parks. He was used to walk on grass. The first time he encountered sand, or walked on sand and I'm not talking beach just normal sand you could tell he was never like he never got really out before we got him so he was not socialized in a lot of ways when it came to even environmental socialization so he is not a super shy dog he's very confident and he loves people he loves being out and about so this does not necessarily stress him but he was so overwhelmed with everything going on that we had to take things really slowly and even like being in a park it was just too much happening so he was just constantly looking and i remember the first time when i had him off leash or on a long leash and he came to a point where he was calm enough to really enjoy a walk and we went to a big park and he just rolled in the grass and it was just this explosion of love of it was just this explosion of happiness like pure joy seeing him rolling in the grass and there's some shots and some videos also where he does zoomies you can go and check them out later if you want but it was just so beautiful and he still does it I mean, by now the zoomies got a bit slower or well, not necessarily slow, but they decreased in time. They became a bit of a less occasion. But rolling in the grass is still one of his absolute favorite things to do. And it was just so beautiful to see. And it just changed something in me. I don't know what it was, but I just realized, hey, this is amazing. Look at this happiness. And this, it taught me just so much to appreciate every moment. Um, especially when I'm with him, if I can be in the worst mood ever if I go out with this boy and <laughs> he looks at me tail wagging and is all happiness. I'm just happy, I'm just content, I'm just so grateful he crossed my path and he's asleep by now by the way. <laughs> yeah, so this was just so freaking beautiful and it, it's still beautiful, it's still beautiful, don't get me wrong, it still is. However, seeing that change in him and it made me want to go for walks without my phone not even listening to music nothing just being there being with my boy sitting in the grass enjoying the moment and just really being in that moment and i i studied global leadership as a master's degree which was mainly occupational psychology so we learned about mindfulness we learned about all of these techniques and all I need is this boy <laughs> and he was the best teacher so he's my absolute zen master so yeah thank you big boy my poor baby is scared of flies 
<laughs> oh, sweetheart, it's just a fly. It's just a fly. Mm. <laughs> it's like a typical dog mom thing, isn't it? You can't move because the dog is comfy. <laughs> you just remain in like a really awkward position. So enjoy the view. <laughs> so, yeah, we are, I mean, this is actually quite a nice point because this is one thing he taught me as well that they are super super sensitive dogs and he might be a bigger dog and he might be quite confident outside etc however this boy is terrified of flies and of so many other things he's just sometimes well by now he's completely all right and he's fine and he learns so much but when i got him he was scared of the world and they're just so often misunderstood and this leads me to the point that one thing i definitely learned from this boy how he wanted to be taught how he wanted to be trained he needed training of course and i'm very consistent however he needed a very very loving hand and positive reward game base was what we went for and one of the really misconceptions about bully breeds that way too often happens is the thought or the the stereotype that these dogs need a hard hand and it couldn't be any further from the truth could it be they need consistency yes but if you would shout at this dog and you know sometimes if you adopt a dog or if you have a dog and things do not work and you shout or whatever with a dog like these they get scared right so it's just not working <sighs> but the history of these dogs is that you know they might not always have been in the best hands and still are unfortunately however these dogs need loving homes they need they they are dogs who need their people who need to be close to their people who want to be close to people and leaving them outside or being really tough on them no they need more they need they need love and they need someone who really cares and they are like so emotionally sensitive i seriously never ever had a dog who's that emotionally sensitive who if anyone is just breathing out heavily wants to check in with you who wants to check you're okay and they're just beautiful dogs who look out for you Another thing I learned about this breed or well, he's different breeds. He's English Staffordshire Bull Terrier, the little ones mixed with an Amstaff, the American Staffordshire Terrier and Bull Terrier and actually a bit Spaniel, but I guess we can leave this one out because it's not really, um, yeah, too visible, is it? <laughs> so yeah, I guess it's safe to say he's a bully. He's a bully breed. He's not a bully, but he's a bully breed <laughs> dog and they are just a such misunderstood breed and one thing is that people think they need a tough hand which totally is not the case but the other thing is that breed specific legislation is real and i mentioned this in the video what it's like to live with a staffordshire bull terrier cross and i'm not talking about pit bulls in here because pit bull is a whole new different level i mean they are probably the most banned breed in the world and I don't think it's fair and I don't think it's right. Um, however, I think loads of people are not aware that it's not just for pit bulls that case, but breed specific legislation is real and it's everywhere in the world. And maybe you know this, but most likely you don't. Rambo and I lived um, in London together for two years, the, just the two of us, because my husband went um, abroad and we actually wanted to move as a family. So we got everything ready, we got him vaccinated, we got his travel crate, got his passport, we got basically everything done and ready. And then this country changed its law and they banned bully breeds, certain bully type breeds from entering the country. And then it doesn't matter if it's a purebred or just a mix. So obviously I would not rehome my baby boy, so I stayed with him here. Because if he can't go, I'm not going. But yeah it's just so so real so and i think this is something people don't really 
grasp how rare that actually is and how often this can happen and it's something to yeah be aware of but it also made me realize how yeah how discriminating the law is against these type of dogs but also then because they're sometimes classified as whatever dangerous dogs or and just being banned or whatever it might be it just creates also so much stigma around them and yeah you can certainly feel it not always though i mean there's so so many people who love them and especially when they see my boy because he's always tail wagging happiness he just makes people happy so yes i think it's um something he taught me to how to overcome stereotypes and He's the most amazing <laughs> role model ever. It doesn't matter what someone thinks about him. He is friendly. He is happy. He's tail wagging. And he makes so many people smile. They can be grumpy as hell. They can just walk around somewhere. His friendly attitude, he just makes people smile. And it's something I totally love about him. And it taught me also that we are not there yet. We have to... Stand up for the ones who can't and we are their voice. So this is obviously not just something he taught me, but if you are involved emotionally in a cause, yes, it just makes a bigger difference, doesn't it? Another thing he taught me, you're a bit heavy. Oh, sorry for sitting like this, but so he can rest his head, his little cute head. <laughs> so one thing this dog taught me is that they just give the best cutters ever. Don't you? Yes, you do. <laughs> He's like just a, just a meat boy. Yeah, so he taught me definitely that stuffy cutters or bully cutters are the best. Um, I always had dogs and I, I mean I have two right now. And the little one is enjoying cutters now. He's getting more to the point. However, this one... And I know it's true for so, so many other body breeds and stuffies especially that loads of dogs don't enjoy being hugged or being cuddled too much, etc. This one here, <laughs> like, if he can, he's under my duvet. Like, he not just wants to be touched and to be cuddled and attention and basically body touch 24-7. If he can, he would be like, next to me all the time if i work he lies he has really comfy beds here he has a chair here but he sometimes just chooses to lie on the floor well we have a we have something obviously on the floor so it's a bit comfy but it's not as comfy as his bed but he would choose to lie there so he could be really close to me and lie on my feet so they just simply give the best cutters and yeah i think if you're like not into a dog who is really cuddly then this might definitely not be the right breed for you another thing he taught me and i think this might be the case because he's super special but it's also because he was my first ever like own dog the other ones were family dogs is the concept of true unconditional love and i think this made me realize what it means to be a dog mom and how much of a dog mom i am I mean, before we had dogs, and it was always like, you have a dog, you kind of like own a dog, the dog is part of the family. But with this one, he made, he made me an emotional softy. I love him to pieces. It made me so concerned if he's not well. I just love him seriously to bits. And I mean, I have him inked on my leg, so <laughs> yes, I mean... I just love this boy. And the last thing he has taught me is that he's actually, I never really thought about dressing a dog or getting a dog winter wear, like a jumper or whatever it is. And it was actually never needed for my dogs. Most of my dogs, like my family dogs, they had hair, like they had a lot of hair. So they were like either like hairy English Shepherd dog mixes or they were, well, I have no idea, maybe Labrador mix, maybe, <laughs> I have no idea, they were like all rescue dogs from wherever, uh, two of them are from Germany, 
one was a Spitz and um, Bobtail, but we call them Bobtail in Germany. And I think it's English Shepherd's dog here. And the other one were, I don't know, like looked like a little polar bear. And the other one was maybe, I don't know, maybe Labrador mix. We have never done a DNA testing and they looked, um, yeah, we, we couldn't really, like there were probably loads of breeds in there. <laughs> but they all have one thing in common, they were like very hairy dog. So they never really needed anything to, to wear to keep them warm. This boy here, a little sensitive baby boy, he gets really cold in winter. So I had to get him a jacket. Um, or like a jumper and he loves it like he is just he loves it he doesn't even want to get rid of it like if it's on I mean we have several ones so we can change them up if he rolled in grass with it or whatever but he seriously would love to live at least in at least in winter time and I think for me this is something where I also and this is probably going back to being a dog mom but this is where I got the passion of dressing us up together like having matchy matchy outfits and stuff like this so yes <laughs> i think in a nutshell he just made me a crazy dog mom who yeah just realized dogs are my life and not just this one but generally dogs are my life he is my world but yeah dogs are my life and i guess there's also a reason why i decided to become a dog trainer because like dogs are a wonderful gift and if we can give something back and maybe give them the gifts of playing games and learning things and learning ourselves to be more patient to have fun and while training our dogs then that's all i can ask for i guess at this point <laughs> thank you for watching and i would love to learn about your experiences with your dog and what your dog has taught you thank you and take care bye